Let's talk about this picture tube tester by RCA, the CR3 uh, WT333A. You know, the one that uh, Brendan, my TV mentor, got on eBay and put together and sent it to me. You know, it's, uh, I started looking around the internet for some information on this set, and boy, I'll tell you what. Yeah, there's people using them, but there's not a whole lot of info on them. Uh, you know, the people aren't breaking it down and showing others exactly what's in this uh, tube tester box. So guess what? We're going to do that today. Now, a few things I did find out about this tube tester. Uh, it's better uh, being used on your older black and white and older colors, uh, color sets for rejuvenation per uh, uh, purposes. If you want to rejuvenate a, a tube, uh, a modern uh, tube, you know, relative to the old tubes, that is, it's a little bit harsh, uh, I guess, because the old filaments were a lot thicker than they are in the newer tubes or the later model tubes. Well, let's take a look at what's in there. You've got five adapters. This kit came with five adapters, and now this one that Brendan put together for me is the universal adapter, picture tube CRT adapter. It was missing, so he put he made this one. Uh, using a, the base of a tube and, and soldered the wires all in and put it, you know, one of these little spring clips on the end of each one, which was real nice of him. And he had a little trouble getting the uh, the tape to stick, uh, the labeling tape to stick to these uh, little clips. So I've got a label machine. I'm going to go ahead and just wrap the label around the wire and go ahead and remove this so it won't be, a, you know, in our way and all that. Just wrap it around the wire. It'll be a nice... Nice setup. You'll see that later. Anyway, we've got adapter number one, which looks like this. Pretty good size. It's a big sucker. With, of course, a male plug on the end. Number one. Labeled number one. This is number two. Big old giant sucker. That's even bigger yet. Again, a male plug on the end. That's what it looks like on the back. Adapter number three. And uh, they also have uh, other numbers written on them. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I'm not going to worry about it. This is adapter number three, and I think this is the one that will work with my TV. I'm not sure. Again, a male plug on the end, black male plug. And each of these are keyed, by the way. They have a key that goes into a slot, and I'll show you what that slot is later. And then adapter number four, which is a lot smaller uh, for a different kind of tube. And then, of course, number five would be your universal. And all of them are keyed. And they're keyed. We go inside the box, and we have a power cord, you know, your standard three-pronged power cord. They recommend here on this label, uh, use it with a isolation transformer. Uh, no problem. I will do that anyway. And then, of course, we have this long gray cord. Here. Look at this length of this sucker. This white connector is what all it's a female is what all these male connectors here plug into and it's keyed to the plug let's just stick one in here see if we can get it to fit one handed i doubt it but i'll try it oh there we go there you go so what we do now is once we select the adapter for the television tube that we that we have you know the size and and, and we know it works uh we don't go ahead and plug it in here like so and then we just take it up and stick it on the back of the tube unplug the existing plug in the back of the tube and stick this in and then go ahead and go through all the gyrations for testing that tube and of course each one is different each one will have different filament voltages uh, I think mine's going to be a 6.3 I don't know I'll find out and uh, I decided also to remove this and I wanted to see what was underneath it I don't like a piece of test equipment uh, that I in my possession without opening it up and seeing what's underneath here. I want to know what I start with. So I went ahead and did that, and in order to do it, I had to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, and then down here in the box, along that aluminum strip down there, are three more holes that had screws in them. Once you remove the 11 screws, then you can go ahead and remove this entire thing from the box. So let's do that. All right, the entire thing lifts out, leaving you just an empty plastic case. 
Let's turn it over and take a look at the back side. Got a big old circuit board on the bottom that's had some soldering work done to it in the past. I can see that the flux is still there. You can always tell with the flux. <laughs> they never wash the flux off. And flip it around this way. And we have our electrolytic capacitors. Now what we have on electrolytic capacitors is we have uh, three, one, two, three, four microfarads at 450 volts. One, two, three. And then these two over here are 16 microfarads at 350 volts. Unfortunately, I can't tell what this one is because you remember I told you in a video just, just recently to put your capacitors in so you can read the values. Let me get a pencil here. I cannot read the value on that capacitor because it's down underneath. Can't tell what it is. Can't. There's no writing at all. I, I not even on the side. They put the value and the voltage smack against the circuit board. Man, that really sucks. I'll. I don't know if I'm going to have to replace these. I always do like to replace electrolytics, just so I. I just feel safer about it. But, eh, we'll see. You know, it's not that big a deal. And there's what the rest of your uh, chassis looks like. A couple of transformers. Uh, one's probably a choke, the other one's probably a power transformer. Let me see. Yep, that one's the power transformer right there, I believe, and that's just a choke. And, you know, a few resistors and a couple of potentiometers down in there. And This is your switch bank right here. And uh, a, uh, a wafer setup, a stacked wafer switch setup for your different positions. Uh, and here's another one over here. That's about it. There's not a whole lot there. I spent the last uh, 30 minutes or so with my brother label making machine I've had for a few years. I, that, that thing is almost indispensable with all the labeling I do. But I made a bunch of labels, printed them out and everything. You know, the tapes, I get replacement tapes of these on eBay. So if anyone has one of these machines, just go ahead and look up, look up the, uh, the tape number on eBay. It's TZ231 if you need a replacement tape for your unit. Don't throw it away if it's still operational. Anyway, each of the wires now has been double labeled. Uh, I'll leave the, uh, the, the labels on that uh, Brendan put on there, and then I'll just have the other ones right below it. So if one or the other falls off, I'll still have double coverage. And here's the uh, owner's, or the user manual, I guess, off the CD printed out. I think what I'm going to do is stop by Office Depot has all the tube numbers and what the filament voltage all it does is list the filament voltage and it tells you what socket number to use apparently this thing had maybe some other sockets to go with it because it does show here all the way up to socket number nine I don't know I didn't I don't think that thing had that many sockets to it it might have you never know anyway I might go ahead and drop into Office Depot, have them bind this thing on one end and put a, a cover, a plastic cover sheet over it, so I can put it inside the uh, inside the tester and, and just leave it there for the next guy that will get this thing, whoever that may be. And of course, before buttoning it up, I'll again clean up all the flux left over from the soldering that was done, the repair work in the past. Some of it is. Uh, burned board. Incidentally, this this type of board right here, this greenish color board, is very thin and very susceptible to heat uh, destruction when you solder on it. Uh, if you put your iron on, on these greenish, very thin greenish boards and you leave it there too long in the process of your soldering, the board uh, it has epoxy in it and it, the epoxy will over cure and you'll get little white speckles around the solder point where you're soldering that's called measling measling and you don't you don't want to do that you want to avoid measling so the whole idea on soldering is with any board especially with this type is to get in get your soldering done and get out don't linger on these boards especially these well that's it I've got all the flux off it looks real good and I hopefully uh, I've accomplished my goal of adding a little more information to the YouTube library, you know, about another piece of test equipment. And uh, 
I appreciate everybody hanging with me. If someone has one of these and they now know a little bit more than they did before, then that's the whole purpose of the video. Until next time, this is John.